Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about March 16th. Oh, March 6th, rather. Uh, LPL two game slate. I'm making a video today um, on a two game slate because I just want to recap what happened yesterday or this morning, rather. Um, and then also kind of talk about the contest um, selection and uh, some people have asked me some questions on the builds, uh, long versus short stack and, and stuff like that. So I just wanted to quickly address those um, on a video like this where we don't have that much to talk about on the actual games themselves. Um, so I think it's a good video to do that. Uh, but before we go in the, into it further, um, if you please hit the like button below, um, that would mean a lot. Uh, smash the like button below, please. Uh, that would mean a lot to us and keep me motivated to make these videos moving forward. Um, but yeah, we have a two game slate. We have Thunder Talk Gaming uh, versus Rare Adam. TT is a sizable favorite at minus 220. And then we have RNG versus BLG. Uh, that is a, basically a toss-up game based on the odds, which I agree with. Um, both teams have been very up and down and inconsistent. But let's talk about why Thunder Talk should be this much favored. Thunder Talk, um, I like Beach One, obviously the jungler, and UCAL has been playing well. It's been the bottom lane that has, has been the problem uh, for that team. Uh, Hoya actually has been pretty decent in the top lane. So the top half of the map for Thunder Talk has been really good, in my opinion, um, just watching their games. But on the other side of the matchup is Rare Adam. Um, they've been up and down. And, you know, uh, let me do this real quick. There you go. Uh, Leanne and Strive have been okay. Actually, here, uh, one thing to note is that BKR is starting at support. Um, so that's an interesting development there. Uh, Leanne and Strav has been been pretty good, as I mentioned, but um, I'd say they're in the same realm as Beach One UCAL, right? Like I think that's where I'm gonna kind of take a look at the metrics to see compare them, uh, both of them, and see uh, which one is better. And then RNG versus BLG, as mentioned, RNG uh has been up and down. Um, they have a pretty good team, as mentioned. I think they're gonna at some point figure it out. Uh, together, but right now it's been a struggle. And then BLG also has been up and down, where they've looked really, really good in certain spots, in my opinion, when they won that series against IG, I think it was. I'll have to double check, but um, but yeah. So let's let's look at the metrics, right? So Thunder Talk versus RA. Thunder Talk at minus 200. It was, and now it is at minus 220. So People have been smashing on Thunder Talk, the favorite. Um, so let's look at that. So I'll just kind of go through the process when I compare these stats. So I'll just go to Teams here on Oracle Elixir, the website, uh, which has a bunch of uh, useful stats for League of Legends games. All right, Thunder Talk. And then Rare Adam. And this video will be a little more lengthy just because I am going through this together. Um, I haven't done the research before I started recording. So let's do that real quick. First, I want to see the total kills over under. Um, I want to see what Vegas thinks of the kill upside is going to be here. Here you see under over kills, map 120. 3.5 over 24, so about 24. It's pretty good, actually. And then I want to see the RNG BLG game and see what that one is like, which is set at 24 as well. So about the same. But then we have the CKPM metric that we look at, which is really helpful uh, to find out what the kill upside is going to be. And it says 0.76 for Thunder Talk and then 0.74 for Rare Atom. And then jungle control percentage that I look at, uh, as you can see, it's the average share of games, uh, total jungle CS, which means 
like whether uh that team's jungler uh um the, the, the cs means creep score right so the, that jungler for that team uh whether how much percentage of the cs they they have uh secured around the map compared to the other team respectively so um though usually the higher you know the percentage is the more control that team and that jungler has around the map which you know is a good win condition to have um especially in the early game right so i value this metric a lot and it says 90 uh, 49.7 versus 49.1 uh favoring thunder talk at plus 1.6% and then lane control percentage is the same thing, but with laners instead of the jungler. So you see Thunder Talk has a slight, no, it's about even, even. So, and then gold spend percentage difference. And I'll tell you what this one says. Yep, average gold spend percentage difference. Uh, GSPD Thunder Talk is leading at 2.8%. And then I want to see their junglers, respectively. As you guys know, I put a lot of emphasis on the junglers themselves, which have a huge, huge impact, probably the biggest impact, in my opinion, um, on in the game uh, amongst all the players. So Beichuan versus Leian. You see, they're about the same. I mean, Thunder Talk by six, so not very much. So, and I want to see just like generally what kind of impact that they have had for their team, respectively. Um, you see more like Beach One does more damage, uh, for that team. Kill participation is usually the one that I look at as to whether that jungler uh, participates in a lot of their teams, uh, kill, uh, team fights. Um, you see Leanne participates more, so that's pretty good for Leanne actually. I'm going to go back and see here. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. So it's actually pretty, it's going to be pretty close, I think. Um, <clears throat> you see, like, the metrics, they're very uh, close to each other's, right? Um, let me see the roster real quick. Beichuan versus Leanne. UCAL versus Strive. One thing, awesome. Hoya Cube. All right, I want to see something real quick. Let's compare the EGPM amongst all of the players for the, from these two teams. You see Thunder Talk leads both uh, in the mid lane, AD carry over the respective counterparts for uh, Rare Atom, which is interesting. And Top laner cube is has been better than Hoya. It looks like in terms of that metric, uh, jungler as mentioned, Beichuan has a slight advantage. Then as mentioned, Yao Yao is starting today, and BKR is starting, and Southwind is benched. So. Yeah, I think Thunder Talk should win this. Um, junglers, obviously, there's an advantage for Thunder Talk at jungle, mid, and AD carry. Uh, just comparing this metric, right? Like, obviously, there's more to that um, when you watch it based on the eye test and all that. Um, but, I mean, I, I put these guys in about the same, like, mediocre realm. Like, none of them stands out, obviously, as, like, elite. Um, so... I think Thunder Talk wins two to zero, actually, given that middle AD carry and the jungle position have an advantage. Even one thing over awesome, which is a little surprising to me, right? So okay. So I'm going to go with that. Um, but on a two-game slate, though, you know, like, you can play anybody. You know, you just got to take your chances, take your hit your spots. Um, but it is what it is, right? You don't have as many 
vari variability options um, to differentiate your lineups and stuff like that. So, all right. Um, RNG versus BLG. Uh, to start start the slate, I mean, to start the odds uh, earlier today, RNG was a bigger favorite, but now it's more of a toss-up, as you can see here. Um, so I want to see the metrics again. CKPM for RNGBLG. Point seven nine, and BLG plays a little bit faster than RNG. So you can see, like RNGBLG is probably going to be a bloodier matchup compared to Thunder Talk Rare Adam, just based on the metrics. But you know, anything can happen, right? So. All right, this is quite a significant difference here, actually. You see BLG plus 3.9%. That's quite a quite pretty, I mean, that's pretty big, right? Um, and then even for the lane control, gold spend percentage, I want to see about similar, but still BLG's favored there. And then... EGPM for the junglers. BLG plus 10. Wow. Huh. Double digit. Let's look at all of the players who are from these two teams and compare them to kind of individually. See, BLG has an advantage at AD carry technically, which is kind of surprising that Gala, you know, I like Gala quite a bit. Not that much of a difference, right? But still. And then RNG in the mid lane. Over your gal. A bit over Breeze. BLG favored. Who is starting? Is uh, Angel starting, I think? And then Tang Yuan came on that one time, which pissed off a lot of people uh, after winning the first game in that series. Um, Angel is starting, but there is a sub substitution risk <laughs> there, which I cannot believe they really did that. Um, I was happy because I didn't really have Angel uh, in that. Uh, let me see. Sorry, I just wanted to go back to my notepad. There you go. Um, BLG, RNG. Yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty close one, but man, this metric like gets me, right? Like It's just like hits my spot <laughs> real badly there. Um, it's like calling my name to just, just like calling out for BLG to be picked. But yeah, I'm gonna have to go with BLG wins two to one. Jungle control percentage quite significant. Um, Elk has been playing pretty well, and for the bottom lane for BLG. And yeah, I think that's an interesting legend overway. So yeah, anyway, so yeah, I think I'm gonna go with Thunder Talk and BLG tonight. Um as my optimal lineup. Um so BLG and Thunder Talk, my optimal stack. So, right, like you talked, somebody asked me about the scout. I'll, I'll start addressing some questions that I got. Um, and one of them was, uh, you know, how to determine four versus three, right? The primary stack and the secondary stack. What I typically do is look at that uh, total kills over under and combined kills per minute metric for each team. And then on average for the matchup, as I have you know done so for these matchups, and then kind of go from there, right? Like you see that BLG has placed the fastest um, amongst the four teams. 
on here and then that game itself is projected to be faster and higher kill upside than the Thunder Talk rare at a matchup. So yeah, that's why I have probably will make BLG my primary stack just based on the kill upside, even though I think BLG wins two to one rather than Thunder Talk wins two to zero. I think it's kind of pointless to even just to the like you know uh guess you know whether two to one versus two to zero and that single game bone you know a game not played bonus and all that i think that gets a little too complicated in my opinion and then kind of clouds your judgment as to what the kill upside is going to be so i just presume that everyone's going to win two to zero or they're just going to have the same result as the other games and then just go from there and just measure the kill upside on that even level of projection uh in terms of the matchups so that's where I that's how I decided decided. And then after that, you know, for GPP though, I do look at some ownership interest and ownership leverage. So like tonight, I think Thunder Talk will probably have the highest ownership just because they're the biggest favorite at minus two twenty or something like that now. Um, I think Thunder Talk will have the highest ownership. Um, so obviously fading that naturally gives you the leverage to be able to uh, you know win any big contests like that but um in terms of yeah i mean stacking i think ownership leverage is important to play especially in those matchups where you think that underdog or the other team in that matchup has a chance to to win especially it has a good kill upside so and then somebody else asked me about i think the second question was whether to you know always prioritize ad carry um you know, as the captain or to stack with the other teams uh, that you're stacking their AD carry. Yeah, I mean, AD carries tend to be, I mean, you see here, like AD carries tend to have the highest kill share percentages, right, for most teams. But it's not always the case, right? Like you see Scout for EDG, I think it was, uh, where he has the highest kill kill share percentage over their AD carry. Um so, yeah, I mean, you just got to look at the stats and metrics and see what kind of uh, dynamics that um, AD Carey and the mid laners have in that team on for that team. And then and then see also what kind of kill participation percentages that, uh, you know, those players in that in those roles have um, comparatively. Right. So you see some of the junglers have, you know, uh, the highest kill upside or kill, I mean, kill, kill participation percentage. So that naturally tends to favor those junglers to score higher compared to, let's say, junglers that do not have as high kill participation or kill share percentages, right? Like, I, for example, I think this morning it was uh, FPX's hacker, you know, he does not have either of those, like either kill participation or kill share percentage that's high. So you want to, you know, make sure that you prioritize other players in the, for that team, for FPX, for example, uh, to be able to fit those priorities in, except for the jungler, right? So like that, that's kind of how my brain is thinking uh, when you are trying to determine uh, who to prioritize and who to stack. Yeah, I mean, I, ideally, 80 carries and mid laners are the prime targets. But if you have four games, five games, and the pricing for DK is bad, then you have to, you know, go 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 to the jungler stacks or top stacks or even support stacks, which have won and took down, taken down um, the GPPs before. So, like, you know, just, just like a, try to differentiate your lineups based on the kill participation and kill share percentages and and also based on the game script right like i sometimes talk about how the games are going to go and you know whether it's going to be a short game versus long game you know that all factors in right like because 80 carries um you know for some of you guys already know 80 carries tend to score a lot more kills you know, later in the game. So the longer the game goes, usually the uh, the higher that AD carries will, you know, end up scoring. Usually the pentakills or the quadra kills, where, you know, that gives AD carries like four or five kills in a row in one team fight. Yeah, that happens a lot, lot more, lot more in, later in the, in, in the game, right? Like 30 minutes after or 40 minutes after in the game, it's the AD carries that have the 
you know, biggest damage items that will, you know, basically have the, you know, most damage output and thus um, more likelihood to score and, I mean, rack up more kills and to score higher, right, uh, compared to other uh, laners in, for that team. So if you think, I mean, it's going to be like dragged out and all that, you know, 80 carries will score better. But, you know, if you are just like approaching a 20 to 30 minute game where mid laners and the junglers, you know, have the most impact in the game where they just rack up kills early game and snowball and try to end the game. Yeah, I mean, that that is a good chance that where mid laners and the junglers can score the highest for that team. So. But anyway, so yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, if you guys have any questions um, or just want to shoot the shit about League, let me know at DFS Chan. Otherwise, yeah, please smash the like button below. Um, otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.